Hey guys, today's topic is maggots in the ear. Maggots in the ear is a pretty interesting topic because I like it the most. So we'll read this under various headings such as the insects, predisposing factors, process, involved, season, symptoms, treatment, and uh, why not. Well, let's get started. That's the plan of action. So insects, what insects are going to basically cause maggots in the ear? The insects are basically flies, like house flies are going to cause it. Second, we are going to see the predisposing factor. The predisposing factor, the flies are attracted to like garbage, meaning not essentially our ear has garbage, but it has false smelling ear discharge. It's going to have a false smelling ear discharge and that attracts flies and uh, bugs and uh, butterflies and literally okay mainly the house flies to come and uh, you know get greedy and lay their eggs so the process starts when the when the thing when the fly gets attracted to the host and it lay eggs once it lay eggs eggs are eventually going to hatch out right how difficult is that to remember so they are going to hatch out and then they are going to give rise to larva and these larva are nothing but the maggots larva are otherwise called the maggots in technical terms okay so in which season this is gonna happen this is gonna mainly happen in the seasons uh in the months of august september and october so these are the months where the flies are going to be pretty high and also they are going to transmit a lot of diseases and the symptoms, uh, symptoms, there's a going to be severe pain. Pain is very severe. It's going to be often associated with the swelling in the ear, around the ear, plus a discharge. Well, this discharge has a typical thing. It's, it's, it's blood stained and watery. So there's going to be a severe pain and swelling around the ear and also discharge, which is bloody, like blood tinged and watery discharge and the treatment treatment is pretty easy we just have to kill the larva and we have to remove it for killing we have to use chloroform water which is very powerful killer and to remove we use a forceps well you might think why not use a syringing because syringing you know it's a very fancy term in ENT and uh, why not use a syringing well, well syringing cannot be used due to a lot of reasons well, the reason is that there are two reasons. One, first reason is that you don't have to use a syringing because uh, the tympanic membrane may have perforated because of the maggots, because maggots need food. Maggots can be misdirected and would have started eating the ear drum. So the tympanic membrane, that is, it might have a perforation or also it is uh, contraindicated when the eardrum is perforated we are not going to do syringing syringing is contraindicated in a perforated eardrum okay and the other reason is that well using a forceps is pretty easy it's you know it's just like you use a forceps and you're gonna remove it how difficult can it be to remove it using a forceps it's very easy because so like for generally irregular objects we are gonna use forceps and for like a smooth object we use syringing and we never use a forceps for a smooth object okay because if you're gonna use it it's going to push it further inside well okay that's all for the maggots maggots we learned the diseases we also learned the predisposing conditions we need the we learned the process the season the symptoms the treatment and all thanks for watching today's video hope you like this video give it a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button i think it's a good idea because you can stay tuned for all my videos so thanks a lot have a nice day stay on the bright side of life thanks it's cooler or cooler up